I always have to do a little dance when I eat. <laughs> Today I'm going to show you how to make savory herb scones. They're super delicious and easy to put together and I like them fresh out of the oven. So I'm gonna show you how to shape them and freeze them so you can bake them anytime that you want. I'm gonna show you all the ingredients you need and exactly how to measure them. I'm gonna show you how to put that dough together, how to cut and shape them, and how to bake them to get that perfect crunchy bottom. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is measure our liquid ingredients. And I'm gonna use a liquid measuring cup. It actually does make a difference. Half a cup of whole milk. Half a cup of milk. Third of a cup of heavy cream. It's gonna add a lot of richness to our scones. I love heavy cream. It just makes the scones so tender. It's not light, but it's good. One large egg. I always tap my eggs on the counter, not on the side of the bowl, so that you don't get any shards of eggshell in your mixture. That's how I'm teaching my little one to do it too. I'll take a whisk. These are my version of a scone. I think probably in England, they probably would call this cake. But I think they're so nice when they're tender and rich. Okay, so that's our liquid ingredients. We'll set that aside. Okay, so. I think the best way to measure flour is the scoop and sweep method. You need your dry ingredient and a spoon. And you wanna just aerate your flour a little bit and then fill your cup. Never put your cup into the flour because then you end up sort of compacting the flour and you'll have more than you actually need. The goal is not to compact the flour when you're measuring it. That's the sweep. I know people do it the other way all the time, but I think that's kind of a secret way that people end up with sort of heavy baked goods. And they have no idea why. But if you scoop it, and then sweep it, it'll always be right. Okay, so now we're gonna do two and a half teaspoons of baking powder. It's quite a lot of baking powder. It's even a little bit more than you would normally need for this much flour, but I find that it gives your scones a little bit of lift, so they're not so dense. Two and a half. And three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. Okay, so we'll just mix all this together. Make sure that baking powder is really well distributed. That looks pretty good. So now we can cut in our butter. And you want your butter to be nice and cold because what we want is for some pieces to stay whole in the final scone so that when you bake it, they melt, create steam, and give your scone a really beautiful texture. I'm just cutting it up a little bit smaller to make my life a little bit easier. I'll put this in, that's eight tablespoons. If at any point you feel like your butter is getting too hot, you can always just throw this mixture into the fridge and forget about it for a few minutes. So I'm using a pastry blender here. I'm just mixing my butter in until we have it evenly dispersed. I want some larger pieces, maybe the size of peas. So I do have some pretty big pieces in there. You can see. I'm okay with the big pieces. It's gonna make our scones so tender. Okay, so now I'm gonna throw in my herbs. I'm using chives and dill, but any tender herbs would work. So you could throw in parsley or chervil or what else? Cilantro would be good. Anything tender. You don't want anything woody like thyme or rosemary. So I'm putting my herbs in at this point because I don't want to smash them with my pastry blender. I just want them to sort of mix in gently. Now I'm gonna set this aside so I can grate some Parmesan cheese. And I always grate it from scratch. It's a little more effort but I promise the flavor is so worth it. I'm gonna grate a little extra because I wanna put some on top of my scones as well as inside. It's probably good. So we'll put a quarter cup of cheese in there. Mix this 
together. Okay, I'm gonna put all my cream mixture in here. Whenever I make scones, I basically just look at the bottom mm. of the bowl. And if I don't see any dry things on the bottom of the bowl, no crumblies, then I stop mixing. It's better to undermix this mixture than overmix it. So now I have a parchment lined baking pan. I'm gonna do this right on the parchment because they're actually kind of tough to move. So you don't wanna do them on a surface and try to move them. So we'll start with a lot of bent flour since it's a pretty wet dough. You don't want anything to stick. We're just gonna form this into a six inch round, roughly. Okay, bench scraper. We'll cut it into eight equal triangles. You could also cut them into squares. Okay. I'm gonna separate them. You could, I've seen some people who just bake it like this and sort of break them apart, like an Irish soda bread or something like that, but I like to separate them. Okay, spread these guys out a little bit. They are gonna puff up thanks to all that baking powder. So it may look like there's a lot of flour on this tray, but I wouldn't worry about it at all because these scones are so moist that anything extra that you see on here is gonna get absorbed right in. If you see any extra on the bottom before you serve them, you can always brush it off, but I think the butter will usually do the job. And we're gonna brush them now with a little bit of cream anyway, so that's even more moisture. And now the cream, it's an optional step. You don't need to do it, but I think that a little bit of cream on top actually makes them brown even nicer. I use cream when I make fruit pies. I use cream on my pastry dough. I love scones because they're so easy and messy and simple to put together. So you can do this while you have a four-year-old on your hip, which I do often. <laughs> okay, these look great. I'm gonna sprinkle them with a little more Parmesan cheese just for extra fun and deliciousness. I'm gonna put these in a 425 degree oven for 20 to 25 minutes. They'll be golden brown and puffed and then toothpick inserted into the center will come out clean. It's a good idea to set your timer to the low end of the time range just so you can start checking and eliminate the risk of burning. They look golden brown and beautiful. I'm just gonna test them and make sure they're done. Let's see, look at that. No crumbs, moist crumbs. That's what we're looking for. Okay, my scones have been resting for a couple minutes. I'm so excited to dig into one. Okay, let's see. Ooh, look at how beautiful. Super tender and moist. You can see all those beautiful flecks of herbs. Mm, look at the bottoms, perfectly crunchy. The tops are crunchy and cheesy, but the center is moist and tender. You can really taste those tender herbs. A little goes a long way, the chives and the dill. It really works with the Parmesan cheese. Look at how soft. Mm. In this chapter, we learned how to make savory herb scones. I showed you how to measure all your ingredients properly, how to make a dough from scratch, how to shape them and cut them, and how to bake them perfectly. I hope that you love them.